Hello and welcome to the Run Testers and this, the latest video in our partnership with Coros. In this video, we'll be talking about all the ways your running watch can help you pace a run. Today's watches offer more data than ever before, and if you're smart about it, that data can almost ensure you'll never blow up in a race again. Sounds good, right? Right, I'm joined now by Tom, and Tom, pacing yourself, it's fair to say, is one of the most important aspects of running, and pretty much every runner on the planet has learned that the hard way by blowing up in a, in a race or a hard training session. Yes, I know that very well. Um, but p pacing, yeah, it's it's just so important. It's it's something that you can use to when you're working towards PBs or just to make sure that you're going at the right pace for your training to meet your fitness goals. Yeah, and in this video, we're going to talk about five different ways you can essentially pace yourself throughout training and racing, including a brand new one that Chorus has recently brought to its watches in adjusted pace. So we might as well start with pace. It seems like the obvious place to start. So most running watches will just show you your pace in kind of minutes per kilometer or mile, depending on your preference. Um, and you can use this to essentially, you know, pace yourself by knowing exactly what pace you're going at. Um, and you usually be able to see your current pace, your average pace, and your kind of lap pace on most watches. So what's kind of the advantages and disadvantages of just using pace, Tom? Well, one of the best things about using pace is it's just a very precise number you can everyone can use it and it gives a really useful guideline of you know how how well your training is going and how closely you're getting to meeting those goals the problem is that when it comes to pace it doesn't really take into account external factors like weather like the terrain that you're on or just how you're feeling that day so although it's a really useful number to work with there are limitations to it yeah, exactly. Like today, even today, I went out on a workout and I was just running into a headwind for half of it. And then, you know, with the wind, the other half. So my pace was jumping up and down, not just on my effort. Uh, and I also find that sometimes when you're using current pace, it's, you know, when you're in tricky GPS conditions like tree cover or buildings, uh, it can jump around a bit. So I tend to use lap pace myself just to give like a, a longer kind of little average pace segment for each run that I can use to know what pace I'm going at. And, that, and that's basically exactly how I often will race in that I'll know what I need to hit each lap to hit my overall target time. And that's, yeah, like you say, the advantage of pace is you get that precise time to aim for, even if it's you know not really taken into account what else is going on around you. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I think it's quite important as well because uh, for somebody like me who's not particularly that good at pacing or doesn't pay attention to it, over time I have learnt what my pacing should be. I'm, I'm getting a bit better at it, but to do that I've had to use pay a lot of attention to my watch to actually learn that so over many years of constantly checking it in races and training I've I've got my head around pace now and I sort of know my right pace but as a beginner I had no idea what pace I should be going at <laughs> okay so adjusted pace Nick this is something a little bit different than pace that we've just spoken about what exactly is adjusted pace so adjusted pace is a new addition to Chorus's watches and it essentially makes pace a little bit smarter in that it will take into account the kind of the incline of the ground you're running on. So, you know, when you start going slow because you're running uphill, your watch will now take that into account with adjusted pace, which you won't get with just a blunt pace reading. So when you're running with adjusted pace, you get a pace reading that essentially shows the speed, the pace you'd be running at if you were on flat ground. If you're running uphill, your actual pace will be slower than your adjusted pace. And if you're running downhill, it'll probably be the other way around. Chorus's uh, adjusted pace reading is based on oxygen utilization, meaning it matches the pace on different inclines to a point when you would be taking the same amount of oxygen if running on a flat road. Uh, so it basically means you can average out the effort on a hilly run across mixed terrain, you know, quite easily because if you just stick to your adjusted pace figure and try and keep that roughly quite level, then you'll know that even if you are slowing down on the uphills and running, you know, and running faster on the downhills, you're making a kind of similar amount of effort across the across the board rather than, you know, trying to increase your pace on the uphills to keep your actual pace up when it's really hard to do so because you're running uphill. All right. So how do you use this are you are you a big um fan of using adjusted pace um so well, i'm using just based on my training uh, in my local forest recently and basically it's there's a couple of ways i think it's really kind of shown me to me that i'm making an incorrect amount of effort at times so often on my easy runs in the forest i probably will just go up hills a bit too fast just because i'll just go in at the pace i'll be running on a flat road and i'll ease off slightly but actually i can see from the adjusted pace that i'm still running pretty quick if i was on the flat road and i start to back off a bit more to make sure I'm basically not making too much effort on uphills in easy runs. And then actually I found the opposite was true when I was kind of racing or trying to run hard in the forest. I'd get to a downhill and I'd ease off and just because obviously my pace is getting quicker um, and I thought, well, I'll just take the free pace going downhill. But 
looking at the adjusted pace getting slower, I realized, well, actually, I can push a bit harder now, you know, and overall my time's going to be better because if I push on the downhills a bit more, I'm not going to lose any ground there just by essentially relaxing. Yeah. Yeah, I think, I think uh, hills are a, a big area of discussion. I'd, I've probably had more discussion around how, how to manage hills in races than any other thing during a race. Um, and, yeah, as you say, it's really useful to have that, that information to say you, you don't need to be putting that much effort into to sort of maintain the pace that you'd be doing on a flat. And especially for people who probably are earlier on in their pacing and, you know, they're losing so much effort when they're p- pushing themselves up a hill. It's a useful bit of information to have because it really helps you to gauge and understand that it is a, a completely different beast when you deal with hills and you need to manage your effort effectively. Yeah, exactly, definitely. At the end of a long hilly run, you'll just be fresher because you will have backed off on those hills and you'll run the downhills hard and your pace will end up being exactly the same as you've been, if you've been pushing just based on pace, but you'll have done it in a more relaxed, yep. controlled manner. Um, I'd tell you the only thing with just the pace, there are still some disadvantages to this that are similar to what you get with pace is that, you know, some external factors still can't really be taken into account. You know, wind, you know, really hot conditions, downpour, and it doesn't, still can't take into account terrain. So a muddy hill is a lot harder to run up than, you know, a flat road hill. So you still will be thinking about all those things as well, but it's just, just making pace that little bit smarter, I think can be very helpful, especially for someone who spends a lot of time running on hills or mountains. Yeah, it, it takes a little bit of the thinking out, doesn't it? It's because with with all sorts of running, you always need to have a level of understanding how you feel. Mm. Um, there's no way of getting around that. If you're if you're feeling a bit off one day, you you need to take that into consideration when you're running. But having having the ability to take the hills out of it means that it makes that a little bit easier, and you can just sort of focus on the bits that are unknowns as opposed to you know just sprinting up a hill and <laughs> burning all your energy out. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, so the next way of pacing your runs is one that I use a lot. It's heart rate, uh, basically your current heart rate, right, Tom? Yeah, so heart rate monitoring is a big area where you'll see lots of people talking about the best ways to use it for training, for effort. Basically, it uses your heart rate either from the optical uh, heart rate monitor in your watch or you can connect um, to a chest strap to get a heart rate reading from your chest as opposed to your wrist. And yeah, you use it for basically measuring your heart rate as you're running. Yeah, and it's great because heart rate really is, you know, a measure of effort. So you, you can see very clearly how hard your body's working based on your heart rate. And basically the best way to use it generally is not to necessarily know the exact figures um, of your heart rate all the time, but to work with zones. Like uh, Corus's watches will break your will break your heart rate down into different zones. And you can use these to essentially judge your training. So if you're going out for an easy run, you want to be in the lower zones, kind of zones one and two. And then if you start to push towards tempo running or long, like long intervals, some long stretches at kind of race paces for marathons, you might start to creep into zone three towards zone four. And, you know, and then zone four is quite long, hard intervals, maybe on the track running 1K reps, whereas zone five is your all out anaerobic efforts where you might be sprinting 400 meters or 200 meters, that kind of thing. So. If it says in your training plan, you've got an easy run, you'll know as simple as I've got to keep my heart rate in those two zones and the Chorus watch will show you, you know, a gauge and you just got to keep it in the right zones and you'll know you've judged your effort correctly. It can make things a lot easier, basically. (laughs) Yeah, and you can actually use Chorus's workout builder to set heart rate zones for your training so that you know that you're actually training to to the point that you want to be training at. And that's really important, not just in training, but also in races because using your heart rate to as a guide means that you can effectively manage it and stop it spiking. The last thing you want in a, especially a long distance rate for like a marathon is that your heart rate is spiking because you just won't, it will just take your, sap your energy and you'll, you won't have the power to do it. It will mean that you can just run at a consistent pace based on the capacity that your heart rate will give you over the course of that distance. Yeah, and one of the great things about heart rate is that it's an internal thing, so everything's kind of factored in, like wind, hills, the terrain you're on, like anything that's making your run harder will be reflected in your heart rate in a way that pace sometimes can't show. So you can very clearly use it, go like, actually, I need to back off. Maybe the pace isn't where I want it to be today, but I know that I can't sustain this heart rate for this marathon, so, you know, at the end of the day, I just have to slow down. Yeah, it's Um, it's definitely the most um, unique measure for individuals because... You can see people running and think that guy looks ridiculously fast. He he must be great, but you don't know about their internal workings, and that and the heart rate monitor does show that. So if you, you know, your your level of fitness will show very clearly in your heart rate when you're running at those different paces. 
yeah, it's still not perfect. Like like all measures, there's still yeah. some disadvantages here, and some of them are that your heart rate can be affected by things completely external to your running. You know, maybe like stress or tiredness or having a big coffee before a run, and maybe the figures don't necessarily correlate entirely to your running effort at times when those kind of things come into play. And often you get a little bit of lag. So um, if you do suddenly start an interval and go hard, your heart rate takes a little while to catch up um, to the effort you're actually putting in, whereas a measurement like pace or power would jump kind of straight away and you'd know immediately you're hitting where you want to be. So you just gotta be a bit careful about using it under those kind of conditions um, uh, and making sure that you know, you're not getting, you're basically getting the right reading that really is judging your effort correctly. Yes, completely. So it's, it's probably better when you're doing st- steady, heart rate running whether you're running a marathon or just even a 10k or something you will generally see a fairly steady accurate pace for that but yeah exactly when you're doing more interval based stuff it you've got to be a bit careful about how you gauge that so i tend to when i when i view interval training i won't take those spots as specifically accurate but it gives me a gauge of of how that training session looked yeah and it's great one to look back at almost afterwards and see your time in different heart rate zones and hoping it was roughly where you wanted it to be and if not you can try and judge it better next time but i would say there's one other disadvantage to heart rate which is the thing i always think about as someone who's very obsessed with hitting times in races which is that um if you go into a race and you judge it all on heart rate and you finish it brilliant i paced that perfectly and you missed your target time by like three seconds (laughs) you're going to wish you used pace and ran a bit quicker at the end (laughs) no matter what your heart rate was yeah it's a risk (laughs) isn't it yeah i I don't think i'd do that (laughs) Right, there. another uh, way of measuring your training effort is a fairly new one, and a lot of people have been talking about it recently, and that is power. Nick, how does power work? What is power? <laughs> uh, so power is a measurement that's long been used by cyclists to gauge their effort, and it's a really great and you know much-loved measurement within cycling, which is why it started to drift over towards running via triathletes a lot of the time, uh, to try and, because power is basically a pure representation of effort. That's what it's designed to be. It's measured in watts, and it's just showing the effort you're putting out at that time in watts. Uh, so basically everything kind of comes into play like the terrain you're on all that kind of stuff you know all those factors are built into this one single measurement that you can use to kind of track your effort during training runs and races and it's something that used to be pretty hard to measure but now Chorus's watches measure it from the wrist across the range so you can simply just look at it during a run and know your you know your output in watts and then after over time you know if you're new to power you just start to learn what that means judge your effort that way working on like if I'm hitting this power number so early in a long run, I know I'm putting in too much effort, I'm gonna to fade towards the end. If I've got the power levels right, I'll be able to finish strong in all the runs I do and hit my workout intensities exactly right. Yeah, um, I know Kieran's a big fan of power. He yeah. likes to chat about power. Um, <laughs> so are there any disadvantages to using power as a, as a, as a guideline? Yeah, there are, there are still some disadvantages. Like, there's always disadvantages, Tom. Um, <laughs> so uh, the big, always the most simple one with power is that it's quite hard to get your head around it. Like, um, it's yeah. completely new to most runners. Like things like pace and heart rate uh, are very intuitive. You understand, you know, if your heart's beating fast, you make more effort, and if you're running fast, your pace goes up, and all that kind of stuff. But power is a new metric. You've got to take your time, and you've got to start testing the water, using them over time. And a lot of people who swear by it who've done that, and at the end of that, they can pace things very, very accurately because they know. The output their body can sustain in power but at first it's a bit daunting it's also that other thing again like i'm talking about with with heart rate which is if you do run purely to power and you miss a target time by a few seconds uh, you're going to be gutted you wish you're going to wish you used pace a bit because at the end of the day pace is what it directly correlates to a finishing time which is why i like it on top of all these other metrics i will say there's one other little good thing about power though which is the one of the problems of heart yeah. rate we talked about was lag during intervals with power the number will rise immediately so you that's why you know again it's very common in cyclists they'll do intervals hard intervals and you can see their graph of their power afterwards it's like precise like a you know a selection of square buildings because immediately your effort goes up and you're at a new power level and you can do the same with running and get that instant feedback as you start an interval yeah, so maybe for anyone watching this who is maybe just starting out in running, maybe leave power till a little bit later and use one of the other methods of um, measuring your training um, because it can be a little bit confusing. Or just go all in on power, use nothing else, and after <laughs> yeah. after about six months, you'll be that's all you'll ever want to use, maybe. Yeah, just invest <laughs> fast fully in power. We talked about various methods for measuring your training, but... One we haven't mentioned is running to feel. Now, running to feel is exactly as it sounds, running to how you feel at that time. And many athletes, experienced athletes, generally know how they're feeling and how it will affect their running. But 
a lot of uh, more seasoned runners do tend to get it wrong as well, as Nick is a prime example because he does tend to go out a little bit too fast on sunny days. Isn't that right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sunny days, like, I feel amazing, so I'm going to run fast, obviously, but that's not what you want on an easy run necessarily. But, yeah, running on field is obviously the most easy way to, in theory, pace your runs, but the problem is yeah, you just make mistakes with it because you do just feel good sometimes or you misjudge things, and it's especially when you're first starting out, you have to learn things. And actually, I think this is where tech can be very handy because... If you're using things like heart rate and pace and all that kind of stuff and power and now adjusted pace over time you learn how your body feels at different paces different heart rates different power levels and then there'll come a point when you are running to feel with a lot more of that knowledge already in your head it's like you were talking about some of races you, you've learned the paces you can run and actually you're kind of doing them on field these days and when if i'm in the grip of a deep marathon cycle like by the end i'll know the marathon pace I need to run at. i won't be looking at my watch i won't be looking at my heart rate because i'll have seen all those things in training and now i know on feel how to run that pace. yeah i think i think there's probably two types of running to feel you've got the one that you're talking about there which is you you know your pace, you're training for races, you, you've got a pace that you need to do to hit that. And it sort of becomes second nature. When I go out for a run and I'm racing, I, I generally look down and I think, oh, I'm, I'm at the right pace because my body naturally just goes to the pace that I should be running at for that race. Sometimes I do get a bit excited, especially when Mike's running next to me. I, I might go a little bit faster than <laughs> I, and I should. But I think there is another running to feel as well, which is that when you're not, for people that maybe aren't racing, when they go out to run and they're just running to do exercise in that way you just run to the pace that you feel you're comfortable with um without having any sort of stats or information around you to to, to push you along to a certain pace so yeah i think there's, there's different ways you can use um r- running to feel but it's definitely yeah uh, for the for the more seasoned runners it, it just it's, it's definitely something you learn over time yeah, I think that second one you, put, you mentioned is really important. If you're not, you know, someone like myself who's a bit obsessive, who's training constantly to hit a target time and, or, you know, training for certain events, you know, going out and running, if having a vague idea that, you know, over the course of the next two weeks, I probably want to do a couple of faster runs, a few slower runs, a few longer runs, and just going out and then going, oh, this day I actually feel amazing. I'm going to do a long run today. Or, you know, this is really hard. I am going to start really easy. And if it doesn't feel any better, I'm going to stop quite soon and go home. And if it starts feeling better, maybe I'll do something else then. It's it's a good way to really learn your body. Um, yeah. And it, yeah, well, it's great. Well, I've, I've been, as you know, I've been injured quite a bit over the past few months. And uh, that's what I've had to do. I had to run on field because I'm so um, naturally used to running at the paces that I run at that I've had to leave my watch at home and just, just go running without it. Otherwise, I end up pushing too hard because I'm looking down going, that's that's too slow for my normal pace. Um, so yeah, I've been running to feel and it is hard. I've really struggled to do it and, and go back from paced running to, to just running and just trying to slow myself down. Um, so yeah, it's it's definitely a skill that you learn, but it's, it's a difficult one to, to shake off as well. Yeah, definitely. Thanks a lot for watching. We hope you found that video useful. You can watch the other videos in our partnership series with Coros on the channel. Um, and there's plenty in there that you can find to help make your running a little bit more enjoyable and easier. So thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and click the little bell icon. It really does make a difference. And check the channel out for all the other videos we've got from the latest road and trail shoes, as well as running watches and headphones out at the moment. Thanks a lot for watching. See you soon.